Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. For Sketchbook Sunday this week, we are going to sketch some puppy seed pods that I got from my sister's garden. I'll have the real-time version for this up in Critique Club, so any Critique Club, club members can check out the real-time lesson and sketch along with me if you like. This is um, going to be done on a toned uh, drawing paper. This is the Arteza Gray Sketch Pad, and it's got a nice amount of tooth, especially for pastel pencils. I was able to put several layers on this paint and or the sketch rather and it held up really well I'm starting in with just a white generals pastel pencil it doesn't matter what brand you have I find the generals brand to be really easy to find and very inexpensive in the United States anyway I also really like the um, uh, the Derwent tinted charcoal they're really nice and soft my friend uh, rich over in the UK sent me a few of those and they do really well I also like the van Gogh pastel pencils by Royal talons but I don't know if they're still available anywhere they're not available in the United States anymore but they may still be available in Europe because Dale Rowney is a, um, a company in Europe so if you have those those are great too I'm sure there are others and if you have any recommendations you can certainly leave them in the comments below to help your fellow artists out. So I started off with my with a sketch in white and then my darkest values with a black pencil and now I'm really searching for the colors in those seed pods. So I'm seeing some rusty browns, some yellow ochres, I'm even seeing some soft moss colors and plum colors. So I try to find the colors, identify them and actually intensify the saturation a bit because I find that a little bit more interesting to draw uh, having those brighter um, more saturated colors in there. I also saw a lot of peach in the uh, seed pod, so I wanted to make sure I got that in too. Sometimes when you work on a gray paper, the colors don't seem as vibrant as they would on white, like that peach is a good example. And I don't think it's it's because it's on gray as much as it is that the value is so similar to the value of the gray. So you might find that you have to use a much more vibrant color to get your point across um, on the gray paper. But the nice thing about working on gray, so if you've never tried this before, I hope you give it a try. Um, or on tan, which could be like a, a paper grocery bag even. Um, the nice thing about working on a toned surface like that is that you've got your middle value done. So all you really need to do is add highlights and shadows. So it can make drawing quite a bit quicker. It can also kind of give you, um, if you have a hard time getting your shadows dark enough, and I see that a lot with uh, beginners, they'll uh, they'll be beautiful drawers. They can get the, the proportions down just right, but they're not going deep enough with their value and they're not pushing their values enough. Well, if you start off with a gray or a tan paper, you've got the medium value down already. So you're automatically going to want to go darker with your darker values which is where I see a weakness in a lot of beginners. So just by starting with a toned paper, you're automatically going to be putting in deeper shadows. And then you can use a white pencil to bring out your brighter highlights. So it's a wonderful uh, type of paper for a beginner to use. And it's also really nice if you want to draw rapidly. So if you go to like a life drawing course or if you like to um, sketch out in on location, having that medium value down can really make a drawing look complete, even if you haven't done that much. So at this point, I've laid down all my color and I'm using my finger to blend those colors together. Now pastel pencils are harder than regular pastels. So you can see that I can keep quite a bit of my structure lines there even though I blended it in. Whereas if I was using a soft chalk pastel, I would have lost a lot of my lines. And I find that since this paper has a little bit of tooth, I can layer up a little bit. So I can go in and I can add lines. I can, I want to make sure that when I do actually add color that I am going with a contour of the shape that I'm drawing. I wouldn't want to just go back and forth and say I'm going to blend it out later because some of those lines are going to remain because it's a harder medium. It's going to grab that paper a little bit better. It's not going to blend out as easy easily as a soft pastel. So keep that in mind if you're new to pastel pencils. Now don't feel like you can't do this project if you don't have pastel pencils. You can use a piece of chalk, a piece of charcoal, and a piece of you know brown bag, um, grocery bag, and you can do this project. And you are going to learn a lot from working on a tone surface if you've never done that before. I want to encourage you to use what you have and to really push yourself. Uh, draw something that's unusual. Um, I love to draw things that I can actually get my hands on like these seed pods. Even though a seed pod might not be that interesting or that inspiring, having something that you can physically lift, like pick up and bring closer to your eyes and really look at it or put it under a magnifier is really helpful, especially if you like to do natural subjects um, and just kind of get build your visual vocabulary, build 
your skills drawing different textures and different colors and different types of things it's all good it you know draw whatever you have handy whatever you see whatever inspires you there's nothing that you're going to draw that's going to like hurt your drawing ability it's all good and the more experience you get drawing the better you're going to be no matter what it is you draw it's just like learning anything it's just like learning how to play mu a musical instrument if you learn how to play jazz and rock and country and classical you, you know none of those is going to harm the other you're going to just be building on your skills so that when you're trying to get a type of feeling in your music you'll be able to do that it's the same thing with your art if you're looking to get a very almost like these are these seed pods are kind of like old and almost rotted feeling you know if you're looking to get that decayed feeling on something that you're drawing you could take some of the textures and colors that you use for drawing these and apply it to it could be like maybe you're drawing a zombie maybe you like to do character design or cartooning and you're doing a zombie or something you can bring some of your knowledge from drawing those textures over to that illustration of a zombie. I mean, that's kind of a weird, I know it's a weird uh, analogy, but but that's what I mean. Anything you can draw, draw anything and everything. Anything that strikes your fancy, anything that turns your head, draw it. It's going to help you. And I just finished up basically by putting some textures on top of the, um, uh, the sketch here. So I started off basic sketch, then I blocked in colors, then I blended it, then I went over to redefine the form and the shapes, and now I go over with my final, um, highlights and textures and um, kind of sharpen everything up. You can shade in between the ribs on the poppy seed because you can kind of see that uh, the skin that's stretched over the structure of the ribs there. And um, so you can see how that would be handy when you're drawing a zombie. Uh, and, you know, just try to pull out the form as much as you can and get those last bits of detail that you want that really help explain what you're drawing what the texture is and what you're trying to achieve and also make sure you got those values right you might have to go in with your darks again if you blended some of them out or after reassessing what you're drawing if you see that oh yeah that should be a little bit darker you can go in and you can add uh, a little bit of darkness to it now if you are working in your sketchbook and you're worried about these items smudging you can spray it with a little fixative i don't find that the works uh, smudges that much in the sketchbook but if you're drawing on the facing page you might want to spray it with a little fixative or hairspray or something to just lock away any um, loose particles of pastel dust although these are nowhere near as dusty as pastels so if you have been um, leery to try pastels because of the dust but you want to try the pencils there i really didn't have any dust when I worked with this and just a little bit on my finger from where I blended and there you have it I hope you enjoyed this project and check out critique club if you want the real-time lesson thanks for watching until next time happy crafting